putting on alert. Pakistan condemns deadly Iranian missile strike on its territory as an unprovoked violation. Iran said it used precision missile and drone strikes to destroy two strongholds of the Sunni militant group Jaish al Ahd. Back to the court. Former U.S. President Donald Trump returns to a Manhattan court to face his defamation trial after sweeping the polls in Iowa. Calls the trial a witch hunt. High on success. Apple now has the lion's share of the global smartphone market, knocking Samsung off the top spot for the first time in 12 years. And Coyote Call. A hungry coyote learns a very valuable lesson. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Mahish Jani. A very good evening, everyone. Good to see you on this Wednesday night. Many stories to bring to you from all across the world. So let's get right to it and let's take you directly to Pakistan. Well, Pakistan says two children were killed and three others injured in strikes by Iran in yesterday's attack, the third country targeted by Tehran this week. Iran said it hit two sides linked to the militant group Jaish al ad according to a news agency affiliated with the country's military. Pakistan called it an illegal act and warned that it could lead to serious consequences. Iran has also attacked sites in Iraq and Syria this week. Iran said those attacks were targeted operations to punish those who breach its security. A missile attack by Iran on Pakistan is near unprecedented. Yesterday's strike hit a village in the vast southwestern province of Balkistan, which borders the two countries. Pakistan's foreign ministry condemned the unprovoked violation of its airspace by Iran and lodged a protest with Tehran. It called the incident completely unacceptable, adding that it was even more concerning that this illegal act has taken place despite the existence of several channels of communication between Pakistan and Iran. China today urged Pakistan and Iran to show restraint. Now, the war in Ukraine is dominating conversations at the World Economic Forum in Davos this week with Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky making the most of the opportunity to address the global business and political elite. Zelensky told delegates that his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, had stolen years of peace and threatened the wider world if he was allowed to succeed in the invasion of Ukraine. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that it was impossible to take away from Russia the military gains it had made in Ukraine. Talking about possible peace talks, Putin said that ideas put forward by Ukraine were prohibitive formulas for the peace process. Meanwhile, at least 17 people were injured, two of them seriously, after two Russian missiles uh, struck a residential area in the center of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second biggest city. Other governor Sima Shiparida is following that story from Moscow and joins me with the latest on that. Sima Yes, Mahesh. Two Russian missiles struck a residential area in the center of Ukraine's second city, Kharkiv, yesterday, injuring 17 people, including two of them, seriously. The strike also badly damaged homes and the local officials said rescue teams were sitting through piles of rubles to establish whether the others were hurt. The city's mayor described two powerful explosions and said at least 10 dwellings had been damaged. Ukraine's emergency services said one of the missiles had hit three-story buildings that had previously housed a medical center. Back to you, Mahish. Indeed. Uh, Simashi Pereira, other there in a world news special correspondent reporting from Moscow in Russia. Thank you very much. Well, after the poor performance in Iowa, the so-called contender for Donald Trump, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, now focuses on New Hampshire, where she seems to have made gains in reducing the lead of frontrunner Donald Trump to single digits. In New Hampshire's live free or die primary, what could be Nikki Haley's do or die moment? Welcome to Little Thank okay, you. Welcome to Little And the former UN Ambassador taking no chances, saying she's not going to debate. Late today, Haley confirming that with Trump sitting out yet again, she won't attend the New Hampshire debate, making her case against Trump on the campaign trail instead. 
70% of Americans have said they don't want to see another Trump-Biden rematch. A recent CNN New Hampshire poll taken before the Iowa caucus and before several candidates dropped out shows the former U.N. ambassador trailing Donald Trump by just single digits, boosted in part by a key endorsement from the state's popular Republican governor, Chris Sununu. This is Nikki Haley versus Donald Trump for the next week. Haley now casting the race in the same binary, her versus her former boss, even as she failed to pull ahead of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in Iowa last night. We deserve a new direction under new conservative leadership. Not getting it could spell problems for Republicans at a general election, too. Polling out of Iowa showing half of Haley's backers would vote for Biden over Trump in the general election. Trump and Biden both lack a vision for our country's future because both are consumed by the past, by investigations, by vendettas, by grievances. The question now, can Haley consolidate that more moderate anti-Trump vote in the famously independent New Hampshire? America deserves better. Well, meanwhile, former U.S. President Donald Trump was in a New York courtroom to defend himself for a second time against charges that he defamed writer E. Jean Carroll after she accused him of rape. From ice-cold Iowa to snowy New York, Donald Trump riding the high of his landslide caucus win before taking his campaign to the courtroom. The former president opting to show up in a Manhattan federal court as a second defamation trial brought by writer E. Jean Carroll got underway. Donald Trump was found liable of sexual assault against Miss Carroll in a civil case last year. This jury must decide how much, if any, he should pay in damages for defamatory comments. As the 77-year-old counts his growing legal woes. They're bull indictments, I'll tell you. They're Biden. You know what I call them? I call them the Biden indictments. Tonight, his rivals are hoping they can count on voters being wary of a presidential candidate potentially facing prison. The reality is, is half the, half the Republicans do want another choice, and maybe more in some other states. Well, China reported a record low birth rate in 2023 as its population shrank for the second year in a row. The trend uh, marked the deepening of a demography challenge said to have significant implications for the world's second biggest economy. China's uh, National Bureau of Statistics announced today that the country recorded 639 births per 1,000 people, down from 677 a year earlier. Chinese Premier Li Chang appeared to break the news early. Speaking at the World Economic Forum in Switzerland on Tuesday, he set out China's latest growth outlook. In the past year of 2023, China's economy has recovered overall and is improving. Our expected GDP growth rate is around 5.2%, which is higher than the target of around 5%, set at the beginning of last year. Official figures a day later confirmed those numbers. They also put fourth quarter growth at the same pace, slightly short of forecasts. For now though, Beijing is likely to be satisfied that its 5% target for the year was hit after a very shaky start. Insiders now expect a similar target to be set for this year. But recovery faces some strong headwinds. Other numbers out Wednesday showed retail sales growth slowing and unemployment ticking up. Another tumble in home prices indicated that the turmoil in the country's vast property sector is far from over. That all has some China watchers betting that the government will have to step in with new stimulus measures. Looking further ahead, however, Li said the demographics were on China's side. At present, China's middle income group is around 400 million people. This group will double to 800 million people in the next 10 years, creating a demand for more and more goods and services. The consumer demand is shifting from quantity to quality, creating a strong momentum for growth. More figures out Wednesday may cause some to question that. 
They showed China's population shrinking for a second straight year, down by 2.75 million. That will mean fewer workers and consumers in the years to come, raising more questions about where domestic demand will come from. Well, a double whammy is heading Australia's way. That story coming right up after this break. You're watching World News. Welcome back everyone to World News Now Australia is bracing itself for a double whammy of cyclones in the coming week as the meteorological department forecasts that the two cyclones will be will reach Australia by this week's end. Let's bring in other Dinat Binet Sinagratna standing by in Melbourne, Australia with the latest on that story. Binet? Yes, Mahesh. Tropical cyclone Andrek, currently a category one storm, is moving slowly south and is forecast to pass to the west of the islands tomorrow night or Friday morning bringing potentially damaging wind gusts and increased rainfall, according to the Bureau of Meteorology. The slow-moving system may also cause rough seas, moderate swell, and flooding of low-lying areas on the northern side of the islands. It is expected to gain strength over the next 48 hours as it drifts south. Meanwhile, a tropical low is developing in the Coral Sea, well off the Queensland coast. Mahish? Indeed. Well, other than a World News Special Correspondent, Binet Seniviratna, reporting from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you very much. Well, video giant YouTube is making millions each year by running ads alongside channels that promote false climate change reports. Now, the accusations were hurled in the popular video stream platform's direction by the Centre for Countering, Countering Digital Hate. It further mentioned how content creators are coming up with new means to overcome the app's efforts to evade misinformation and their respective efforts in this domain are going strong. YouTube is making millions of dollars a year off of climate change deniers. That's according to a report published Tuesday by the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a nonprofit that monitors hate speech, which said climate deniers have found ways to evade YouTube's misinformation policies. And that's allowed videos filled with false claims about climate change to run on YouTube's ad-supported channels. The CCDH used artificial intelligence to review transcripts from more than 12,000 videos from the past six years on 96 YouTube channels. In doing so, the organization noticed a new tactic used by climate deniers. Instead of disputing the existence of global warming, which would ban such videos from the site, most of the content analyzed attacked climate solutions as unworkable, portrayed global warming as harmless or beneficial, or cast climate science and the environmental movement as unreliable. According to the CCDH, YouTube, which is owned by Alphabet, makes up to $13.4 million a year from ads that run on the channels the report analyzed. In a statement, YouTube did not comment directly on the report, but defended its policies. A YouTube spokesperson told, Debate or discussions of climate change topics, including around public policy or research, is allowed. However, when content crosses the line to climate change denial, we stop showing ads on those videos. The CCDH, however, called on YouTube to update its policy on climate denial content. Well, Apple now has the lion's share of the global smartphone market, uh, knocking Samsung off the top spot for the first time in 12 years. The American phone uh, giant accounted for more than a fifth of phones shipped last year, according to data from the International Data Corporation, the IDC. Well, Samsung took 19.4 of the market share with Chinese phone maker Xiaomi, Oppo and Transition following behind. Smartphone sales have been uh, faltering as many people upgraded in the pandemic. And the IDC reports that almost 12 billion smartphones were sold last year, a drop of more than 3% from the previous year. It is the lowest amount sold in a decade with many consumers tightening their purse strings in the face of economic challenges and high interest rates. Experts predict the market will recover this year. As Israel presses on against Hamas in Gaza, children there are facing growing misery. Here's a heartwarming story about a 13-year-old who is now raising his seven siblings 
after his parents were lightly killed. For the one million children in Gaza, life has become unbearable. Mohammed al Yazaji is 13 years old and now has more responsibilities than he ever imagined. With his mother killed in an Israeli airstrike and his father missing, presumed still buried under rubble, Mohammed is taking care of his seven brothers and sisters. They live in a tent in Rafah. Israel ordered Palestinians to come here in southern Gaza for their own safety as Israeli troops battle Hamas. A pile of clothing and blankets is all Mohammed's family has left. I want this war to end and to go back to school and be with my friends, he says. Instead, every morning, Mohammed collects firewood and has learned to cook for his siblings. With no money at all, neighbors sometimes give him handouts. But it's not nearly enough, so he joins the scramble at the food lines. Children can wait for up to eight hours for a single pot of soup. Mohammed's youngest sister is still a newborn, but he can't get her to drink the formula a shopkeeper gave him. He tries to sing like his mother did, but he doesn't know how to sue the baby. Also in Rafa are Nadine and Jude Abdel Latif. She's also 13, also from Gaza City. She's moved six times to escape the fighting before ending up here. Medically vulnerable children have been pushed over the edge. In October, we visited a home for disabled children in Gaza City and saw Iyas, blind and with debilitating complex needs. He and the others have also been displaced to Rafa, now living in a garage. He's become very stiff without the medicine he needs to relax his uncontrollable muscle contractions. A coyote had uh, some unfortunate luck. <laughs> that story coming right up uh, after this. You're watching the news. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to World News tonight. Now Malaysia's endangered tiger population received a glimmer of hope, marking a positive stride in nationwide conservation endeavours. The ray of optimism comes as a camera traps in Malaysia unveils a rare sighting of the critically endangered Malayan tiger. This tiger is one of the last tigers in Malaysia since the 1950s. The country has witnessed a staggering uh, decline in tiger numbers, plummeting from approximately 3,000 to fewer than 150 tigers today. Habitat loss uh, due to deforestation and rampant poaching for the illegal wildlife trade are the primary culprits behind this alarming trend. Now, a South Carolina man saved his beloved family dog from being attacked by a coyote. The drama started when Timothy Snipe was out in his yard with his uh, pint-sized chihuahua named Roxy. It's man versus coyote. And this guy isn't about to lose his tussle with the wild animal. Timothy Snipe was out in his yard in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina with his pint-sized chihuahua named Roxy. Suddenly, Roxy noticed the coyote and ran right for it. Despite wearing a bathrobe and slippers, he knew that unless he fought off the animal, Roxy was a goner. The animal fights back, biting Snipes multiple times. So he grabs the coyote by the tail. All this time, Roxy is yapping away. Watch what happens next. Snipes carries him over to a garbage bin and drops him inside like trash. But look! You can see the lid of the bin moving as the coyote tries to escape. Animal control showed up to take the coyote away. Snipe is taking no chances. From now on, Roxy will be wearing this spiky harness that will make any coyote think twice before trying to chomp down on this feisty little gal. Remember a few days back a story about a cat basically facing a challenge like this? Cats don't run away. Dogs do. Well, that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time on World News Tonight. See you then. Bye for now.